Hey, what's going on guys? In one sentence here, Abelian is a quantum resistant layer one proof of work blockchain with multi-level privacy preserving options. It was launched in March, 2022 after four years of research and seems to be gaining traction on Twitter lately, although it still seems largely undiscovered in my opinion. Their Twitter profile has about 6,700 followers, including NIM, which is its own privacy preserving project that I just recently did a video on and thought seemed pretty legit. It's also followed by Son of a Tech, one of the most popular crypto miners on YouTube, who recently said Able is one of the best spec mines this year, also proclaiming GPU mining is coming back. Bitches. <gasps> Sir, like the quantum thread is real and only about five years away based on what I've read so far. And the question is, could Abelian be a solution? Let's get more into it, but please remember this is not financial advice. Some of the team is doxxed. Dr. Duncan Wong is one of the founding members of the Abelian Foundation in charge of its early development. And according to his Twitter profile, he has been building crypto since before you and I were born. Just anecdotally, I do like his Twitter profile. It's got a bit of degenerate-like style, which lately I'm starting to think is a requirement for a project to get off the ground and start to do well. I was also able to find their marketing lead, Lena Luong, uh, who is also doxxed apparently, but I was not able to find a dedicated team page to explore more of the team, so take that for what you will. Abelian is fully open source and community driven, which is a huge bonus in terms of security in my opinion. There are really two features of this project that make it stand out. It's privacy preserving capabilities and it's quantum resistance. Starting with the privacy side of this, from their website, Able transactions are anonymous and untraceable and have been proven secure thanks to the adoption of a lattice-based linkable ring signature, a commitment scheme, and a zero knowledge proof system. I'm not a coder or developer myself, but just from doing general research around crypto, this tech does seem well known and used because I come across it all the time. There are entire EVMs based on zero knowledge proofs like the ZK EVM on Polygon, and Monero also uses ring signatures. Unlike Monero though, Abelian has multiple levels of privacy. You can keep things pseudonymous similar to Bitcoin, completely private like Monero, or you can decide to sit somewhere in the middle. Abelian supports accountability, which lets a user share trapdoor information with a third party in such a way that full privacy is still ensured against the public. Personally, this is fine in my opinion. You can keep it as hidden as Monero if you want, but with a trapdoor, maybe the exchanges will be more favorable to it and maybe a big exchange will list it. Although if there is a trapdoor at all, doesn't that mean that it can be reverse engineered to expose everybody? Like mentioned, Abelian has been launched since March, 2022, but it seems to just now be getting listed on centralized exchanges. It was listed on XT on November 18th, 2023. So like a week ago or so with another centralized exchange being announced December 1st. And based on their recent Twitter poll, it looks like the community thinks MEXC is up next. Not the best exchange in my opinion, but one of the better known exchanges out there. And you might be wondering how they're getting exchange listings when the project is proof of work, since theoretically there aren't coins just sitting around, but more on that later. Another cool feature regarding their privacy is that your Abelian wallet address changes every time you use it, enhancing the privacy and untraceability. And to my understanding, that happens without you having to manually do anything. The second big feature and the one that might actually catch this one on is going to be its quantum resistance. The Abelian core team expects quantum resistant blockchains to be the only survivors in five to 10 years. In December, 2022, IBM announced its 1000 qubit universal quantum computer. And sometime in 2026, IBM is planning to roll out a greater than 4,000 qubit quantum computer. And this is no good. Dr. Wan says that existing blockchains would take thousands of years to break with con conventional computers like we have now, but for a modest quantum computer, it will take only hours. But this isn't just important for the cryptocurrency industry. Cryptography is used to secure all types of information from the biggest corporations and even for governments. And there are organizations out there trying to stay ahead of this, 
Standardization bodies, such as the U.S.'s National Institute of Science and Technology, have already published quantum-resistant cryptographic algorithms for the industry to adopt. Dr. Wong goes on to say that, as of the very intrinsic form, Abelian blockchain has positioned itself as the digital gold in the quantum era. And I'm assuming what he's saying here is that Bitcoin itself, digital gold 1.0, is inevitably going to be compromised. I don't know if it's true or if I'm reading into that too much, but that's what I kind of took away from that. And what do you guys think? Do you think Bitcoin is going to be compromised by quantum computing or are they gonna be able to figure all this out for all of these other blockchains as well? Seems like the quantum angle could be a good narrative in the bull run, you know, to go along with AI, games, gambling, and real world assets. And this is the only the second quantum project I have come across so far. Like Bitcoin, it will have problems scaling though. Its block time is set to 256 seconds or just over four minutes. However, from their Explorer, the average is about 76 seconds uh, when I peeked at it, at least. There are 48,000 total addresses, which I was not expecting considering the Twitter following is you know where it is but it's not really that surprising either considering how long this project has been around. So the use case of the token would be the network fee and as Dr. Wong said, a store of value as you know something like digital gold 2.0. They do have plans to scale it though and are building a layer two EVM equivalent smart contract layer supporting 1000 transactions per second. And a bridge is also in the works that will connect the main chain to this layer two. The tokenomics look pretty decent. They did have a pre-mine of 20.58 million ables at Genesis, which is 9.14% of the max supply. And this is what they're using for community buildup, marketing, and also likely what they're using to get on these centralized exchanges since it is a proof of work token or a coin. It looks like they did sell some of the coins in August 2022 to a VC fund called Draper Dragon, although I wasn't able to find any other VCs or what this particular VC may have paid in particular for each coin. At the very least, the pre-mine was about 9% of the supply, so I suppose I'm not as concerned as I would be for other projects with clearly stated 40% to the insiders type of tokenomics. It's not even listed yet on CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, but I got the math on how to find circulating supply, and after doing it, it's at roughly 77 million at the time I'm recording this video. 20 million of those were the pre-mined allocation though, which makes up 28% of the current circulating supply. As we know, some of those 20 million were already sold off or released, and I'd imagine most are still there being kept in a reserve for development. The other 91% of the Able coins will be released over 32.5 years, with halvings happening every 3.25 years, with a max cap reaching a little over 225 million coins, which means about 35% of the max supply has been released so far. And after the first era, which is 3.25 years, 122.4 million will be released. That may seem a little bit steep, but it's actually less steep than some of the other projects I've seen, where say 40% of the supply was released in just the first year. As mentioned, it does have a low Twitter count and less than 2,000 members in its Discord. However, it does look like people are starting to talk about this one as it hits these exchanges and becomes more widely accessible. And considering the foundation has money to market, I could see this doing well with Zeely quests or other marketing schemes. Right now, I'd put the cold score at about a three only because mostly it's size. But the degeneracy, the marketing funds, the exchange listings, now people have a reason to shill and I expect to see more of that. Check out the Patreon if you're interested in tracking my portfolio and join the Discord if you haven't yet. I have links to those in the description. And if you liked this review, check out this one that I just did on proof of work blocks. Another, well, proof of work coin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.